Hello and welcome to the Tired Craftsman channel. I uh, decided to shave the other day, so I wanted to try something. Now I'm kind of feeling like I made a huge mistake. Anyway, if you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, you may already be familiar with my very work in progress bola launcher. I apologize for the crudeness, this is a very rough prototype. I've actually received quite a few comments asking for me to make a tutorial on this, and while I really want to give the people what they want, I also would like to point out that this is very early stage. This is not the finished product. It still has a lot of things that I would like to improve on. It can't quite catch a running target just yet, but it's something. You know, I've got a bit. So I'm going to show you how I got to the point that I'm at, and this will probably be a part one because I already have ideas for improvements. So let's go. So the first thing we need to do is take an oak dowel and cut it to about 7 inches long on the miter saw. After that we're ready to put it on the lathe. Now if you don't have access to a lathe, that's not a big deal. You could still do this with a grinder, you could do it with a dremel. It doesn't need to be 100% symmetrical. I'm just doing it this way because it's faster. Now we're going to need part of this projectile to fit inside a pipe that's going to be the body of the launcher. Um, you want about two and three quarter inches of the wood to go down inside of it. So you just keep grinding away or chiseling whatever you're doing until it slides in there with no resistance. You don't want it to be loose, but you don't want it to be tight. After I'm done shaping and sanding it, I use a bandsaw to cut the piece in half. The two halves need to spread apart once they're fired, so I'm going to put some little compression springs inside to make that happen. Now I need to drill some holes into each half so that the springs have room to fit inside. And the quick easy way to do that is just take a little bit of paint, dab it onto one side, then press them together, and then you'll have your marks on each piece. Then using a drill bit that's just a little bit wider than the springs, I drilled some holes about halfway into each piece. And I drilled one more hole at the bottom and put a piece of aluminum in one side because see when it gets loaded in, the spring is going to push against the half that has the locking mechanism on it, but the other side gets shifted up just a little bit more. So with this tab here, they'll be able to fit together perfectly while stuck inside the launcher. Then I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to hold the springs in. Uh, one spring is going to go on each side. One's going to go in the top hole and the other one's going to go in the bottom hole on the other side. So that way when they fit together, there'll be two springs, you know, one on top, one on the bottom, spreading them apart. Then after that I put an eyelet onto each piece so that I can tie them together. And while we're here I figured I'd put a little bit of wood stain on it, you know, make this one look a little nicer. It is YouTube after all, right? This of course isn't a necessary step. Then with the aesthetics out of the way, I tied them together with about six feet of rope. After that I drilled a pilot hole and then put in a screw that's going to act as the locking mechanism catch for the projectile. And now we're ready to build the launcher, and it doesn't take a whole lot. What we will need is one three-quarter inch pipe cut at seven inches, a second three-quarter inch pipe cut at about three and a half inches, two end caps that fit three-quarter inch pipe, one piece of three-quarter inch oak dowel cut at two inches, and a seven inch long compression spring from an airsoft gun. Next I'm drilling a bunch of holes to make a L-shaped cut into the pipe. This is going to act as like a catch for the projectile once it's stuck in. The screw will slide down and then you push it over to hold it in place. Oh and also this is being done on the 7 inch piece of 3 quarter inch pipe. Then after a generous amount of sanding we have our little L catch thing for the launcher. Then I take a little bit of hot glue and attach the airsoft spring to the 2 inch piece of oak dowel. This is going to act as the base of the launcher internally. Then I used the 3.5 inch piece and one of the end caps to make a little holder for the rope for the bola. I also ended up putting a little bit of connector on the other end so that it would be flush when I attached it to the launcher. Then we insert the airsoft spring into the launcher and put the end cap on and then use a screw to hold it all in place because if you don't secure that down with a screw, when the spring is compressed, it's going to launch that cap right off the other end. And I'll admit that I was a little bit lazy here, but you know, this is a prototype, this isn't the final design, so I just used a little bit of duct tape to attach the rope holder onto the launcher. And then put a little bit of hot glue along the sides just to keep it more stable. And even though I just duct taped it together, I still wanted to make it look a little bit nice, so I primed it and then sprayed it with some Krylon Dark Metallic Metal Spray Paint. 
And then, you know, while I was feeling artsy, I just painted a little spiral design on the bola. I don't know, uh, my brand is like, you know, villainous, and I don't know, something about it just felt right. I, I don't know. And with that, we're done, and it's time to load it. Um, I don't really know how to articulate this right. It's best to just, just watch. This is how you load it. I feel like I couldn't have explained it better than just showing you with a visual. Loading the rope totally sucks, by the way. I'm thinking in future designs, maybe have a detachable cartridge that goes along with each projectile that has the rope in it. See, I, I told you I got ideas for future designs. Don't worry. All right, now let's try it out. First target, tripod. So when shooting at a stationary object, you can see that we got something here, you know? It launches pretty well, it wraps up, but how well does it do on a moving target? To answer that question, I recruited my reliable roommate named... So as you can see here, we're not having the same success. I think a big part of it is probably a power issue. It's not being fired hard enough. And it probably needs to be heavier, that's my guess. I, I don't really know physics, but I'm, I'm assuming. And that's where we're at with it so far. Right now, it's kind of just a fun little toy, but with some revisions, I think we can get it to where we want it. Um, I don't think that this two-in-one projectile is going to work out. It's way too light to get kind of a momentum, I guess, to swing around and wrap somebody up. But if we make it any heavier, I think it's going to be too much on the spring. So in the next version, I'm going to make two separate projectiles, each with their own spring propelling them. And then if that doesn't work, then we're probably just going to move to CO2. If I'm being honest, the CO2 one is probably going to be what ends up working. But I'd really like to have a gadget that I don't have to constantly buy new CO2 for. So we'll try springs first, and then when that inevitably fails, we'll move on. So I hope you enjoy the video tonight. Uh, stick around for part two sometime in the near future. And until then, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Uh, because I know that some of you out there want this. Oh, this is a bad idea. Thanks for watching.